Hey and welcome back to another Dark Vault tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this animation here, which is the sci-fi particle, sci-fi molecule thing, I don't know, <laughs> I guess I'll think of a better name by the time I upload it. So let's align the camera by pressing number pad 1, then control and alt number pad 0, shift A, let's add in our UV sphere. And if we look around the scene, we can see the camera has been added all the way out there, so if we select the camera, just drag this in a bit, make it a little bit closer to this sphere. If we select the sphere, just press S, we can scale this up a little bit. So let's press Control S now to save this. And then you also want to press Control A and apply the scale since we just scaled the object up. We make sure you do that. Okay, so we can add in our first uh, modifier. So select the modifier and we want this to be a displace. And then what we can do is select New. And if you come over to the side here, we can press this button. It will take us over to the Texture tab. So it's just a lazy way of switching from this one to this one. And um, what we can do is change this type and we want to choose clouds. Now you can choose pretty much any one of those different uh, yeah, different procedural textures. It's up to you. I'm just going to use clouds. Now the maximum scale this will go to is 2. So it's quite zoomed in. And I'm going to use, I'm going to be animating this later on and be using between 2 and 1. So I'll just leave it at 2 for now. Go to colors. I just want to increase this contrast to make it a little bit darker as well. Again, these uh, the settings are all up to you. You can change it, but for now, I'm going to use these ones. Switch back to the modifier tab, and we want to um, use an object to define the texture coordinates. So let's first shift A, and we're going to add in an empty. I'm going to use a plane axis, and we can't see it, so I'm just going to press S and scale this up, like so. And then what I want to do is select the sphere. And then back in the modifiers here, we want to choose change this from local to object. And then the object is going to be that axis, that plane axis we just created. So that empty there. Now we see the object has changed. So if we move this around, it's going to start yeah, <laughs> making it. Also, when we rotate, it's going to move it around. And same thing when we scale it. So I actually want to scale this now, I want it to be a bit more of a bumpy shape to begin with, like this. So I'm just going to press S, and scale it to something like this. So that looks fine. So when we move this around, it gives us some nice, interesting shapes. Okay, so that's the first bit done. Uh, let's shift A and add in the second empty. And this one's just going to control the rotation, so I'm going to add a circle. And then let's uh, press S to scale this up so we can see it. So what we want to do is empty, uh, sorry, parent this empty to the other one. So make sure you select the plane axis first, then hold shift and then right click the circle, press control P, and we want to set parent to the object. So now when we select the circle, we can press R to rotate and it will also rotate around. It gives us a bit more uh, movement in the scene, which will help later on, especially when this is moving around. Okay, so now uh, we can start animating it, and the animation part is very simple, it's very basic. Um, all we need to do is just add a few keyframes. So press numpad 0 to go to uh, camera view. With the plane axis selected, we're just going to press I to add a keyframe, and we want to hit location. This is important, we only choose location for now. Jump to say frame 120, and then we can press G, move this empty around, then make sure you press I, and then location again and then jump to the final frame, the end frame and we can press G again move it to say here actually let's go um, up here, give it a different shape and then press I to add a keyframe and then location again so let's also do for the rotation so I, but this time we want to press rotation with the circle selected then I go to the end now let's just hit R to rotate this whole object, something like this, then press I again, and then rotation again. So now the rotation has been uh, keyframed. And we want to do the same for the plane axis again. So go back to the plane axis, and then we want to press I, but this time rotation. And then let's jump to say the middle frame around here, and we want to press R twice. So press R and then R again, and this will give a free hand rotation. Then we can hit I, rotation, then jump to the end, press R, and then R, gives you freehand rotation. Select where you want it, then press I, and then rotation. 
So now we've got quite a lot of movement. The problem we have is between each keyframe, it sort of it speeds up and slows down. It eases between them, and we don't want that for this example. So let's split this window, and we can change this from the 3D view to the graph editor. And we can see all oh, these are the curves. These are the is the motion of the location and the rotation for that empty. And we want to change these to vectors, to straight lines. And it's pretty simple to do. It's very easy. So with the uh, plane axis selected, all we need to do is press uh, V and we select vector. So now all these are going to move at one speed, at a constant speed. They're not going to speed up and slow down. Select the circle and do the same thing. And if we play through this now, we can see that it won't speed up and slow down. It'll just move at one constant speed, which is, yeah, it's what I want for this example. Okay, so with the modifier tab still selected, let's uh, let's just reduce the strength down to say 0 0.6. That should be fine. We will be coming to. Um, in fact, let's animate this now. So let's select the texture tab. And we want to animate this size value here. So the same thing we did before. We're just going to jump to the first frame. And let's set, press I while hovered over size. And it'll change this to a yellow color. And then let's say jump to around the middle. Let's say around here. So let's reduce the size. Say 1.2 something. And press I again and jump to the end frame, let's bump this back up to 2, press I to add a keyframe and the same thing we did before, we need to just, uh, we've already got this selected so we just press V and we can change that to vector so now again that's going to be a constant speed it just gives us a bit more motion, a bit more movement on the object itself so yeah, you want to maybe want to refine that, make it faster, make it slower, it's completely up to you but I'm happy with the movement now so we can move on and let's just add a basic texture let's I'm going to add like a yeah. I'm going to add a placeholder texture for now, and then later on we can come and append in some other shaders we've already created. Change this to the node editor, and then let's add a new material. We can call this. I think I'm going to call it the Omega particle. Just sounds sci-fi, and I don't know, is that a word? Sci-fi? It sounds science fictiony. I don't know. Anyway, so let's just add in a mix shader here. And this is just going to be, again, it's going to be a placeholder texture or material, just so I see, can tell how it looks. Just reduce this down, make that black. Lower the mix. And I want it to be quite shiny as well. The only difference between the shader that we're going to be using later on, or the one I'm going to be bringing in, is it's going to pretty much have a Fresnel. Um, other than that, <laughs> there's not much difference apart from the quality of it. Okay, so now we've got that placeholder material, we'll be able to see how it looks. I also want to add in another modifier which is going to be a subdivision surface modifier, make it a little bit smoother. Don't want any jagged edges, it should be fine. Change that back to one so we don't slow down the, the viewport. Okay, so we've got the motion, we've got the placeholder material, let's uh, sort out the background. So in the render tab, we want to change this so the background is transparent. So under film, let's just check that. We also want to add some uh, environment lighting. So we select the world properties, select use nodes. Now, normally you just choose the, you'd go here to environment texture and then probably open up an environment HDR image. But if we render this now, it's not really going to work for my example because, yeah, the reflections completely destroy the effect. So what we're going to have to do is create our own uh, lighting, environment lighting. So I'm just going to press the X there. Let's just uh, give us a bit more space here. So selecting the world properties, we can just delete that image there. So open this so we can preview what we're doing. I'm going to shift A, I'm going to add in a texture, it's going to be a noise texture, pretty simple, and then let's plug this in, it looks quite horrible now, so let's make a few adjustments, let's increase the scale, or reduce the scale should I say, something like this, and we also want to get rid of that colour, so shift A, um, hue saturation value and get rid of all this saturation, going to be adding our own colour to it later on. 
Shift A again, and now we're going to go to instead of a shader, we want to go to color, and it's going to be a mix RGB. Change this to some green because that's what the background is going to be, and let's change this to multiply. Okay, so I will do some uh, more changes later on from the world settings, but just change it back to the object tab. <laughs> it's pretty confusing, but yeah. So I also want to change this to the node editor. I'm going to be doing some um, compositing. In fact, I probably could have used that one, but oh well. Let's change it to the scene tab. Use backdrop, use nodes. So right now the, um, the texture is looking horrible. It looks terrible on that. But don't worry about that because we'll make some adjustments. So let's press Shift A and this is going to add in the background. This image is just a basic star background, but I'm not going to be using it for that. I'm just going to be blurring it out and just using basic colors. So let's change this from Gaussian to Fast Gaussian. And we can uh, select relative if you want. Change this to say 2. And let's preview how it's looking. Uh, maybe a bit more blurry. Still far too detailed. So I'll come back and change that. Shift A, add in an alpha over. Plug in this, see how it's looking. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not looking too great right now, and previously I probably would have just abandoned this. I would have gone, oh, it looks terrible, and I would have gave up. But um, yeah, just keep going. Um, adding a lot more compositing now will make it look a lot better. So Shift A, and we want to change this hue saturation. Let's change the, uh, the hue to say about 0.2, change this to a green color and we definitely want to change this now so you can see how bad the mix shader looks we just change this to the material tab again all I want to do is append in a shader so go to file down to append and this is one I've made previously so you want to select one that you've already made if you've not made a PBR shader or any kind of advanced shader before I'll leave a link in the top so press that I and you can go to the tutorial it's a very good one from Andrew Price I'll show you how to make one so yeah, this I've just done a render now and switched the tab so you can see the difference. This is a very basic mix. So I'm just going to delete these. And if we switch this, press Shift A. I'm going to go down to Group and bring in that dielectric, the PBR shader. Just hook that up, change this to black. And then give that a render. We'll see the same scene. But this is going to be with a, a, a completely more advanced shader, which it helps sell it more. And you can tell the difference between this one and I switch back to slot one. And yeah, it just looks so flat and boring. And this one looks a lot better. So again, it's still not perfect. It does need more compositing. So what we can do is just do a bit more compositing now. But I also want to change some settings before I forget. So I change the frame rate to whatever you want. And then also I'm going to change this to a file. So H.264 video file. I will be increasing this later on and also changing the, the light paths to speed up the render. I'll um, put a link in the description as well so if you want to speed up your renders. Also make sure you select motion blur, increase this a little bit. I mean it's not going to be moving that fast so you might not notice the blur that much but it definitely helps sell the scene when you have some motion blur in it, especially when things are moving. Okay, so again the next final part is just adding some more compositing I guess. The compositing is up to you, so you go ahead and uh, do it the way you want it to look. Everyone's got their own styles, their own tastes, so yeah, how, make it how you want it to look. But I would say, since uh, a few more adjustments, I want to bump this up to 100. Oh, and since we are making an animation, you want to make sure that you select this button here, so we don't get so we get um, random noise rather than static noise. I did a, a tutorial. I'll put a link again up in the top, so you can check that out. So once you've set your file output, you can go ahead and render. 
So hopefully this tutorial helped. If it did, be sure to give it a like. Uh, as always, thank you for watching.